States like California, Arizona, and Florida, and countries all around the world already use crumb rubber in roads successfully. I'm walking on it right now. So you'd think that rubberized asphalt would be just the thing to take care of some of the tire piles around the U.S. and save taxpayers money. But as you'll see, it wasn't quite that simple. Just ask John Chafee, Republican senator from Rhode Island. Remember that tire pile in Smithfield, Rhode Island? With the state's main water supply just a few miles away, that pile made Chafee nervous. This represents a, the potential of an incredible disaster. So the senator actually passed legislation that by last year would have required states to use crumb rubber in 20% of their federal road projects. A great way, Chafee says, to help level those mountains of tires. Crumb rubber would take about a third of the tires that would be disposed annually. That's about uh, 80 million a year. But there was one big obstacle, and it came from what you might think was an unlikely source. Ironically, the ones who build the roads, the pavement industry. The industry's lobby led the fight in Washington to shoot down Chafee's measure. And it worked. The crumb rubber mandate was repealed. It, it got blown away. The asphalt lobby is that powerful that it can destroy a bill passed in Washington? Well, the asphalt yeah. lobby? I mean, come on, really? Well, there it is. What we don't want is somebody from Congress jumping in and saying, you know, this is the best thing since sliced bread, and prescribing it. Mike Acott is president of the National Asphalt Pavement Association, NAPA. Acott says the reason the asphalt industry opposed Chafee's bill was because pavers didn't want to be forced to use what they claim is an unproven and expensive technology. When you add crumb rubber, it basically doubles the cost of the pavement. Um, doubles it? Doubles it. The only way that you can off offset that cost is that the pavement has to last longer. And does. And unfortunately, it doesn't. It doesn't? Well, let me show you a study that was uh, done through the National Academy of Sciences. And it says here, the field performance of asphalt rubber mixes mm -hmm. has been very mixed, very variable. But a closer look at the same study cited by ACOT shows that the mixed results were attributed in part to projects with poor design and field quality control. According to this very study, using the rubberized asphalt in the way it was perfected in Arizona does help resist cracking and abrasion in roads. And when it comes to cost, this study by the American Society for Testing and Materials clearly states, asphalt rubber will provide life cycle cost effectiveness virtually 100% of the time. Now, if you're wondering whether rubberized asphalt only works well in hot and dry places, remember that Arizona test road we showed you earlier? It wasn't built in the desert, it's in Flagstaff, an area that gets more than 100 inches of snow a year. And pavers who have actually worked with rubberized asphalt say it outperforms conventional asphalt in all kinds of weather. Oh, it's great. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> Mark Belshi is a Napa yeah, member who works for an Arizona paving company. Belshi is puzzled why so many in the industry are dead set against rubberized asphalt. Uh, I wish I understood it, really. I, I, you know, I think if you look at it hard enough, you'll come around to the idea that it's, it's a great idea, that its time has come. And others felt the same way. This memo, obtained by Dateline, was sent to ACOT by a Napa member in South Africa named Ronnie Renshaw. We think your campaign against the use of crumb rubber is ill-advised in view of the performance and cost benefits and the disposal of tires in the USA. The response was that we are not against crumb rubber. We told Mr. Renshaw that we were against the mandate. You cannot have one-size-fits-all solution. You cannot mandate it. It just won't work that way. That sounds reasonable. After all, what industry likes to be told how to run its business? But critics charge the pavement industry's underlying reason for opposing rubberized asphalt had more to do with money than a mandate. That's because longer lasting roads made of half as much material mean less work and perhaps smaller profits for traditional paving interests. This is a financial threat to a lot of the asphalt paving industry. That's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, if we can get a pavement to last longer, we're for it. Whatever the motive, critics say the end result of Napa's campaign against rubberized asphalt was that an ideal solution to a dangerous problem ran into a roadblock.
it was it was a difficult fight. You look a little frustrated, actually. What I think is a really terrific technology severed a black eye. And what we might achieve at the state level will take us an extra 20 years, what we could have done at the federal level. So, while the debate goes on, millions and millions of tires every year will continue to be thrown out. And tire piles around the country, like the one in Rhode Island, will remain a serious environmental threat. You can't have it both ways, baby. You're either going to have the pile, or you're going to have a way to get rid of them. Senator Chafee isn't giving up his fight to reduce the nation's tire piles. He has a new idea. A small tax on each new tire sold. The money collected would, among other things, help states buy rubberized asphalt for road projects. This is Dateline Friday for October 23rd.